एंड माई सेल्फ अमित ग्रुप सी एफ ओ आई थिंक इट्स अ हिस्टोरिक डे फॉर द ग्रुप वेयर वी हैव क्रिएटेड रियली सम वेरी बिग माइल स्टोन एंड वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द वेरियस माइल स्टोन लेट मी टेल यू देर आर क्वाइट अ फ्यू अचीवमेंट्स विच वी हैव बीन एबल टू डू टूडे वन वी हैव सोल्ड ऑन अ स्लम सेल बेसिस द एफ एम सी जी बिजनेस विच वॉज मैनेज एट द रेमंड कंज्यूमर केयर लिमिटेड फॉर अ वैल्यू ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव करोड्स दैट इज वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट इफ आई टेक बेस्ड ऑन द रेवन्यू कीप क्वाइट द प्लीज दिस टू मच नॉइज पीपल टॉकिंग बेस्ड ऑन द रेवन्यू इट इज मोर देन ऑफ एफ आई ट्वेंटी टू मोर देन फाइव एक्स ऑफ रेवन्यूज एंड अ सिग्निफिकेंट वैल्यू इन टर्म्स ऑफ अचीवमेंट दिस वुड कीप Since it is a slum sale, we are keeping the manufacturing facility of the condoms at Aurangabad with us, which will continue to do a B2B business in India and overseas, and also supply to Godrej consumer who is the buyer on the slum sale basis. As RCCL is getting significant amount of cash and liquidity, we have taken a large corporate initiative, which is. critical for the success and the future's growth of the company that is we are demerging the lifestyle business which includes branded textiles which is branded shirting suitings branded apparel garmenting business retail mtm all those businesses gets demerged from raymond limited into raymond our consumer care limited which is the rccl business along with the debt so the gross debt at the lifestyle business is close to 2000 crores as on 31st of december which will get transferred along with all the assets and liabilities thereby making lifestyle business complete net debt free as you know it is very important to say that raymond being a listed entity and since the significant part of the business of raymond limited is being demerged raymond consumer care shareholders will also get the shares a uh, raymond limited shareholders will get the shares of raymond consumer care and thereby making it as a listed entity so what we will achieve that lifestyle business will become a pure play listed entity with zero debt and it is poised for a significant growth in the future raymond consumer was majority owned by the promoter entity and jointly owned by the promoter entity as well as raymond limited promoter had the ability to take out the money but his commitment is towards the business and therefore he is putting the entire money back into the raymond consumer care limited lifestyle business ensuring that it becomes a net debt free therefore it reflects that whenever the promoter has made a monetization of asset he has contributed back into the business which is seen reflect in the last 4 years is close to 1400 crores has been invested and the raymond limited which has been which will have primarily the real estate business and investments into the engineering business as well as the denim business will continue to run the business that part of the business as we all know was always having a net debt free and having a cash so therefore by this what we have been able to achieve we will have two listed entities out of the group with pure play net debt free one focused on lifestyle business which is a b2c business and the other one is a real estate business so that is the broad achievement the company has been able to deliver we'll be more than happy to take the questions uh, thank you uh, thank you sir uh, and congratulations on this announcement i just want to understand a couple of things uh, as far as uh, sale of uh, the consumer care business is concerned uh, how much uh, of the proceeds would come uh, into payment because of course one of the owners of that company will be able to sell uh, second part uh, do you have uh, for the balance share holding uh, is there any intention uh, to sort of uh, uh, let go of that stake as well going forward uh, second thing that i wanted to understand uh, 
Is there any more further restructuring then left after this particular announcement at the group level itself? So, because I think that will be left with the real estate business. Uh, if you could help us understand these two questions. Mm -hmm. so, three clarifications. First point, the value of FMCGCA comes to RCCL, Raymond Consumer Care Limited. What we are doing is we are demerging the lifestyle business with the debt into RCCL. So therefore, there is no need, the money needs to go from RCCL to anywhere else. Over a 12-year month period, through the NCLT process, a demerger will happen. Interim, we will take the money, that is a different story. But on a sustained basis, the money which is there at the RCCL will knock off the debt at the Raymond lifestyle business. So that's point number one. Second thing as far as restructuring, so I would call it, this is an initiative which we had always mentioned that we will create a pure play businesses and we had also stated with our demonstrated performance of being a net debt free company that consistently we have been reducing the debt. We all know from a 2400 crores to a 930 crores of debt which we delivered. We have achieved the journey of being a net debt free which we said over the next two years sooner than later. So to that extent, our intent has been completely demonstrated and we had always mentioned that once we are a debt free company, we will take an initiative in order to become a pure play listed entities. So you will have Raymond Consumer Care, which is possibly will be named later, will be a lifestyle company with a pure play, Raymond Limited, again a large pure play on the real estate business, with obviously the investments into the engineering and the telecom business. Right, Mr. Amit from CNBC. Uh, what's the timeline that we're looking at with respect to listing Raymond Consumer Care? And uh, I just start by what you just said, you're looking at renaming it or is that, I mean, will it continue to be uh, Raymond Consumer Care? So, uh, number one, you know, it is an NCLT process which would take anything between 12 to 15 months. We will have to go through the regulatory process. So that's the timeline which we are looking at. And obviously at some point of time during this process, when the company gets listed, we will be changing the name. Okay. And also with respect to the sale to GCPL, now from the brands that are going, Park Avenue, also the FMCG bill is going. Now I want to understand how will that work because you already also have Park Avenue in the brand of textile space. That would be an overlap. I would, I mean, I would assume that a licensing agreement would work better. So just run us through how that. Sure. Works. Good point. Actually, you know, the way the trademarks are considered, it is a registration of a certain class or certain chapters, which are prevalent in the Indian context. So you have got for the personal care, home care, trademarks which are registered under the name of Park Avenue that gets transferred to GCPL. All the rest remains with us. And we are also able to start the FMCG business under the Raymond brand on a go-forward basis. So that's the way we are looking at it. And just to add to what Amit said, you know, we are strong in the premium apparel space. And they are strong in the FMCG space. The more they grow the FMCG business, so if they sell, say, from 1 million cans to 2 million cans to 3 million cans, that's great publicity for the Park Avenue brand under apparel. And the more apparel we sell, the better it is for them. So I think it's a good win-win situation where we have created, where the ownership of the brand might be in two different people, but they're in two different categories. And both are specialized in their categories. Right, no, I mean, my understanding was just the confusion, right? Because it's one brand with two different companies. So what? I mean, they're, see, well, even if you license it to somebody for 20 years, yes. here it's the same thing. Okay, fair here I'm getting the money up front, which is helping me to unlock value in the company and creating two pure play companies, okay. which will be the real estate company and the, the lifestyle company. Mm -hmm. And when I'm able to do that, I'm unlocking significant shareholder value. Right, right. And also you're looking to keep the manufacturing... Sorry, there's some questions here. You're, you're... Oh, yes. Yeah, Go ahead, go ahead. I'll come to you. I'll come to you. So manufacturing you... Oh, sorry. So what is the promoter contribution to the lifestyle? So 100% of the my equity holding in the consumer company 
I am leaving back in the company. I am not taking a single rupee out of it. So my 50% of the sale proceeds will stay in Raymond Consumer Care and as a promoter, I am putting 100% of my sale proceed back into the business. So you are putting it back into the lifestyle and the real estate business? Absolutely. And which is a, a very strong statement to show my commitment and belief in what the company will do. I'm so sorry, if I can just take the question on the manufacturing unit, I just wanted to understand, since you want to continue that and that you said would be on the B2B front, how big is your B2B part of that business that you would want to keep the manufacturing uh, facility and how much of a value add would that be for you going forward? So it's a it's a small manufacturing facility, so we will continue to supply to GCPL mm -hmm. for the Kama Sutra brands under their brand name. Mm -hmm. And we have some of the customers in the domestic market and some overseas market which we will supply. It's not a very large business. We don't want to go out and split those numbers. These are some confidential numbers which we would like to keep it with us. Sorry, there's a question there. One. I'll come to Can you. Speak two questions. I have two questions. Uh, with key mergers and by selling, your, uh, selling the consumer care brand, how would the shareholders be benefited from it? And the second one is uh, like interest rates and uh, the inflation. How is it affecting the reality business? And are we going to hear some new uh, launches in upcoming years? So, two things. One, as far as the shareholder benefit is concerned, this is very important to have a pure play businesses, which is very important for the investors. An investor of consumer side does not generally like to invest in a reality or a conglomerate. So therefore that is very, very important to show a pure play business, which we have achieved. Second thing, by making a debt debt free company, you take away all the possible vulnerabilities of a business. So that is adding to the shareholder value creation. As far as the second leg of your question, see at this juncture, you know, we will be announcing our results in a short period of time. You have seen our performance that one after the other, the launches which we have made in the real estate has done a very good performance. You have seen what we did with the first project, the second project and the third project which we launched. I cannot go beyond this in terms of telling you the numbers and anything. And if you have a unique product which can sell well with the right configuration, demonstrated performance, you are selling well. I think there's a question here. Sorry, cannot hear you. Yeah. Can you just speak up a bit? Yes, yes. Then what you when you are selling to B2B brands? What will be the value for you? No, B2B is from us to Godrej. We will make the product. We will continue to export, Sorry? We will continue to export. We will export and sell to Godrej. Yes. When we sell B2B, it's in their brand name. It's not our brand name. It's a business business. And how big is the Kamsutra brand? Sorry? How big is the Kamsutra brand? Kamsutra brand? Yeah, see, I don't it's want to get into... It's a quiet period now, so we don't discuss so the, the uh, numbers. numbers. Uh, and I mean, you spoke about the debt being, is it two percent more debt you will pay back or 930 crore? No, no, so gross, gross, gross debt, debt. Is, gross debt is 2,000. We talked about gross debt. And debt is 930. Yeah, the 31st debt. December, 930 crore was the debt. 31st December. Look, at the Raymond Group, we believe very strongly in managing and nurturing our business. And in our demonstrated performance, every single business, we have demonstrated growth, margin improvement, and that reflects in the value creation of our business. And Would you say it's a good deal for a good deal consumer or a good deal for you? You know, <laughs> let me tell you something. Nobody does a deal if it's not good for him. Okay? You must look at a win-win. 
100 rupees in your hand has a different value than 100 rupees in my hand. Should I have got 300 crores more? Yes, I could have got 300 crores more. But by getting 300 crores less and getting the deal done, see what I will achieve on the the deal every uh, the uh, demerger. If I get that done, I won't make 300. I'll make 500 crores more. From their point of view, you might think they have overpaid, but they are smart business people. They know what the potential is. Sometimes you don't pay for the product, you pay for the potential. And if they just take it and plug it into their system, they have a growth plan. And, you know, they're very smart people. They've done extremely well. I know them extremely well. So I think this is genuinely one of, and I passionately say, genuinely a fantastic win win deal. Uh, some timeline for the IPO for RCCM? Sorry? The timeline for the IPO for the... So, there is, there is no IPO. IPO. What IPO. will happen is the demerger process will ensure that it is... Listed. Yeah, it gets the listed. The demerger will take 12, 12 months and months. then it will get listed. And what is the JKFS IPO? Sorry? JKFS IPO. That is not happening just now. Uh, could you help us understand with the demerger on your financials, uh, what could be the kind of value that moves out in terms of... Uh, so as of now, obviously, as I said, we are on a period where we have in week to 10 days results to come out. So we will not get into the specific what will go out, what value. That's not appropriate for me to speak. But you all know, as I explained, branded textiles, branded apparel, garmenting, MTM, everything moves as a lifestyle business into the RCCA. So Raymond continues as a purely, so the focus for Raymond Limited will entirely be real estate. And then you said that with investments in engineering and the denim, those are as subsidiaries of uh, Raymond. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, and at the right time, you run, see, there's too much to do. Okay. We wanted to get the big elephant out of the room. Of course. And I think for years, the investors have said, when will you deleverage, when will you, yeah. so two things we've been hearing, when will you deleverage and when will you demerge? These are the two things we have heard. When, yeah. <laughs> One, after this we will be zero debt and cash surplus. Number two, we will have demerged. Right. I think two very big things you take over today. Three, you take over debt free and the very important thing that the promoter is putting 100% of the money is due to him into the company. To help in the demerger. So, what will the promoter get? What will the promoter get? Long term. See, I am in the business of value creation. I have taken a bet that my business will do well. Most people would take that money and put it away. I have put it back into my business. To say, I want to grow this business, I believe in this business, and I'm putting my hard-earned money into this business. It's a very important sign. And to build on that, I mean, Raymond is a hundred-year-old brand. Yeah. It's built over hundred years, decades of people building brands. So this is now the next journey. So today, we are actually announcing four things. The sale of a business, debt-free, demerger, and promoter putting 100% money back in. So it's a very significant day in the history of this organization. And it is not the one time in the past, in 2019, when the promoter entity sold the land. At that point of time also, the money generated of the sale, sale proceeds of land was again put into the company. So that is a, like a, it has become a history that the promoter and asset monetization comes back into the business because he believes in the business of the growth. And I also believe my, my returns will be better in my business than outside. So it's simple. Hi, Shriram from Reuters. The timing of the deal is also interesting because it's broadly, you know, somewhat slow m and markets in both India and globally. Given that demerging is something that investors have asked you for a long time, you could have done it earlier, you could have done it a bit later as well. Was there a thought to, you know, push it out even a little further? Maybe push it out? push out this demerger a little further, maybe when you get a better valuation or when markets are better. I mean, it's a good deal irrespective, but was there that rationale of could we do this later? Could we do what later? No, I think two Maybe things. Maybe we sell the business. 
See, opportunity waits for nobody. You can always say, should I have done it six months earlier? Should I have done it 12 months later? I believe in one simple philosophy. You know, I tell you, 25 years ago when we sold the cement business, they said you sold it, you sold it cheaper. You sold... It suited my purpose then. Today, the price that I get helps me achieve a much larger objective of demerger and getting debt free today. Two very, very important things for me. And with one bird, uh, with one stone, I've killed three birds. I mean, it is a, if you actually go home and think about what we have done today, it is, it is historic. And it is path breaking at some level. <laughs> What will be? What will be the value? Val See, the value at which it goes is based on a valuation report. Now, obviously, what would be the value at that point of time when it gets listed is the market forces will define the value. Currently, what is the valuation of the business No, but the business which is going out, we sold it for 2,825 crores. So that is the value of the business which has been sold. So it is, somebody paid that value, so therefore I would consider that is the value. Now for the 1,400 crore rupees, uh, can you give us a sense about the break up? 1,400? Uh, uh, this uh, promoter is 1,400 crore rupees. Uh, you, uh, the promoters should have invested in 1,400. Yeah. Uh, can you give me a sense of the break up uh, about how much doing the lifestyle and the real estate? So actually, we have to understand the 1400 crore is a sum of two promoter contributions into the business. The first one of 350 crore was done in 2019 when the land of the promoter sold. The second is this, which is 1000 plus crores, which is the promoter share on the sale of FMCG which again goes back into the lifestyle business. So to that extent is this 1400 crores. So there is, you cannot define whether this is a business, the 350 crore what we put in 2019 was relating to lifestyle or for the reality business. It was Raymond Limited. And you also spoke about the 100% promoter contribution. And you give an idea for that. 100% promoter contribution means whatever share of the promoter on the sale proceeds, 100% of that proceeds has gone into the business. So it is not 100% the value because the promoter held only 49%. So he, whatever the value coming out of the 49% has been put into the lifestyle business in RCCL. Thank you. Done. Any other questions? Or okay. okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, namaste uh, to the panel. Uh, it's a wonderful panel, a power packed panel, and we'll see more such stalwarts from Indian industry uh, through the rest of the evening. But this panel represents uh, between them several hundred years of experience in doing very complex industrial projects. Uh, one of the youngest companies here does such fantastic stuff, very high, uh, sort of a high science in some ways uh, in the business of refractories. And that's why the composition of the panel is uh, great to discuss that first question that I'm going to throw. Uh, Praveer, I'll uh, start with you, uh, Mr. Sinha, as one of India's largest integrated power companies. Uh, the fact that uh, this is India's moment has been said for years now. Uh, and also the fact that 
the world is india's oyster particularly after covid and particularly after what has happened in china uh, beyond the numbers and the bottom line which drives you how would you respond and tell our audience here uh, how is india the world's oyster thank you siddharth thank you mr puri thank you india today group for the opportunity and good afternoon to everyone uh, i come from one of the oldest companies we are just 108 years old but uh, we are very young in heart uh, in terms of what we want to do and uh, how uh, india can play a uh, important role in the change especially in terms of uh, sustainability clean energy and i come from that field but uh, siddharth you rightly mentioned that uh, post covid and post the geopolitical situation which is there this is india's decade this is india's possibly the century also uh, with a huge population uh, 1.4 billion i think we have a great workforce over here and it's not only the workforce which is there but also the consumers which are there and this is a aspiring india this is uh, india which uh, with our young people are aspiring they see every day on the tv they see on their mobile phones what's happening globally and how they have missed out in many of the opportunities that they could have participated and i think uh, 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 what we have seen how india could come back very quickly after covid uh, the indian people went through very difficult times but it was march april many of them walked home uh, hundreds of kilometers but came back and the resilience that has been demonstrated by indian uh, really shows that india and indians can do anything anywhere in the globe and i think that's the adaptability of the indian people uh, in terms of economic uh, metrics that you see everything has been right Uh, india continues to be the highest growing in terms of gdp uh, it's the fifth largest uh, in terms of economy uh, third in terms of purchasing uh, power parity so i think uh, all the right things are happening in india uh, in spite of the conflict in uh, in europe and in uh, especially russia uh, and ukraine uh, we have been to a very large extent insulated by the changes over there Uh, we've been able to handle and manage and the indian government has been very very proactive on this so i think uh, the indian economy will really grow very fast uh, while there are certain things which are given uh, right uh, the 6% 7% is a given thing in right. india uh, the aspiration is how do we make it in double digit and i expect that with the type of changes that is happening in the economy and the opportunity and india leading Uh, globally in the g20 uh, we will definitely get into the double digit sooner than later great uh, sort of uh, point to start off uh, sajin ji i'm coming to you and uh, many in the audience would uh, would relate to your brand and your company because uh, wood is expensive it is scarce bahut sare hamare jangal bhi kat chuke hain but plywood is what really uh, helps the average indian uh, add to his home of course you can't just make a home out of uh, plywood unless you have done some innovation uh, but tell us do you see in in the industry that you have built up over so many decades india being a competitor to china and in fact being a alternative destination for both investments and technology thank you siddhar so <coughs> when you referred plywood so i will start with this only uh, around it was 1993 that time all of a sudden we saw that there was huge demand from china and then plywood from all over india was moving towards china there was 50% increase in the domestic price in a span of 3 months and then not only from india from all over the world things were moving to china because there was housing revolution taking place in china hmm. the government's policy uh, that everybody should have a house so and then onward china endeavored in augmenting their capacity and very soon china increased their capacity almost 50 folds 
and in a span of 30 years china has become self sufficient in plywood not only in plywood in the plantation timber also which is the base of all the panel uh, in the world and uh, I, I will give you comparison at the moment our plywood production is 10 million cubic meters 10 million cubic 10 meters 10 million 